Tonight's video, we have eight different creepy and horrifying stories, true encounters of people being stalked, whether it's in the woods, whether it's on the streets or at bus stations or outside of your bedroom window. This is what happened to them. Stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, click on that bell and smash that thumbs up and tell a friend. Now let's get spooky. Last night, I went to the auto parts store because my car took a shit. Thank God it was my weekend. I saw the price of the part and had to come back to get it after getting the funds. I went back and picked up the part I needed. It was around 9.30 p.m., so it was already dark out. I was paying for the thing and the employee from another store, he had a company shirt on, was saying bye to the cashier helping me. The cashier said, thanks for coming by, and the guy left. After some small talk with the cashier, I pay for my part and dip out. Headed to the car parking lot outside the door, and the other employee said something I can't recall. He asked for my name, gave a shortened version. I looked at his name tag, said his name and shook his hand because he was going in for the shake. He said that I was really cute, told him I appreciate that, and we got in our cars, parked right next to each other with a spot in between. He started backing out while I looked behind me doing the same. Looked to the right, clear, then to the left, and saw the same dude looking over his shoulder, breaking his neck, staring at me. I was surprised and uncomfortable, so I snapped my head back and acted like I went to look to the right again. He pulled out of the lot, and I pulled out of the lot behind him. He didn't put his blinker on the turn, but when he pulled to the main road, he put his hazards on and stopped at the right side of the road. I thought, is this MF going to follow me right now? Took note of what the car looked like, color, type of car, district sticker, and the bumper, just in case. I pulled out past him and checked my rear view mirror. He was still there with his hazards, so I was like, nah, just being paranoid. Then he started driving. He was quite a ways behind me, but eventually he came up closer. Still didn't think too much. He drove past me on the passenger side, two lanes over, and I kept my eyes forward because I'm not looking at this dude after that weird crap he did on the lot. Thankfully, he was just right there before a light where the two lanes merged into one, and he passed me and got in front. I was still behind him, but for safety purposes, I turned right at the next light to go on a different road in the opposite direction of home. I didn't want someone to know the general location of my home, because I'm outside all the time. Mind you, the auto parts store is like seven minutes from my house. As I make the right, this dude puts his emergency lights on again and pulls to the side of the road. There wasn't a parking lot for him to turn and follow me, thank God, as I kept driving, checking my rearview mirror, seeing if he'll pop up, and thank God, he didn't. I was afraid he would see me driving across the main road to get to my house, because we started on the main road, but thankfully not. I've been keeping an eye out for him and his car since then, since I lived so close to that store. I told my boyfriend about it and described the car just in case. Hopefully, I don't see this guy around. Thankfully, I was using my family member's car, who lives about 15 minutes away, so he doesn't really know what my personal car looks like. My bedroom is the hottest room in the entire house. In the winter, I have to almost fully cover the vent to block heat from coming in, and I have to sleep with the window open a tiny bit to keep it from getting too hot. I have medical issues that cause me to get violently ill if I get overheated. When it's fall, 
I generally keep the bedroom windows open. They have screens on them and I have blinds and blackout curtains. And sleep with them open. I have a window in the front of the house and a window on the side of the house in my room. The other night, I was watching TV because I had horrible insomnia and just couldn't fall asleep. Sometime after midnight, I heard footsteps outside my window on the side of the house. There's leaves all over the ground already, so it was pretty loud. I paused my show and listened. Honestly, just figuring it was just one of my roommate's dogs. I realized, unfortunately, that there was no way it was either of his dogs. The girl dog is much younger, maybe a year old, and she prances everywhere. It's pretty adorable and very distinctive since I hear her out several times a day. His other dog is a large dog, but he's very old, very fat, and slow-moving. He generally can't even walk the distance from the back door to the other side of the house near my window. His walk is also very distinctive because he hardly lifts any of his paws when he walks. He's seriously super old. I also noticed that it was very clearly the footsteps of someone walking on two feet. Within seconds of me pausing the TV, the steps completely stopped. I listened for a while but eventually turned the TV back on. We do have a tree between us by my window and our neighbor. It's completely plausible that if someone was outside the window, they could have climbed into the tree and waited until they got away without being heard. Eventually, I fell asleep. Just a little while ago, I dozed off watching TV, only to be woken by my cat frantically jumping on my head to look out the side window. He never looks out the window when I'm asleep because he can't find a way to the window without stepping on me and waking me up. His tail was fluffed out and his hairs on the back were slightly raised. I've rarely seen him do this. He has only acted like that one time towards an animal, and that was a cat we brought into the room and allowed to eat his food. He looks out the open windows all the time. He loves seeing the other animals. This took me from scared to absolutely freaked out. I paused the show and again... It was unmistakably human steps outside my window again. Only this time they didn't stop when I paused the TV, and they definitely weren't trying to be quiet. I heard them take several quick steps and the sound faded towards the front of the house, confirmed when my cat launched himself across the room to look out that window. I heard what sounded like a car door and then nothing more since. I called the police and two searched the outside of the house with flashlights and another car drove around shining their spotlight around the neighborhood. Here's hoping whoever this is doesn't keep coming back. I'm going to get some cameras as soon as I can to put outside my windows so that I can find out who this is and have them stopped. Today, I had to go two hours away. My husband usually takes us, but he wasn't able. And I don't like driving long distances, so me and my son took a bus. On our way there, everything went well. The bus ride was okay. On our way back. Have you ever felt funny while in public? And then you notice someone's looking at you? I felt that today, while we were waiting for our bus to arrive. Me and my son were sitting on the waiting area, and a man was looking at me from outside. I didn't find it creepy at first. It wasn't a bad look or anything, but he was staring. I looked away, but I could feel the stare. Once our bus arrived, I noticed this man walking over to it. He got on the bus, and a few moments later, we did too. I noticed he sat almost at the back of the bus and our seats were almost at the front. I didn't think of it until later when I was getting that feeling again and I was starting to get a headache. I accidentally dropped my sweater and before I could pick it up, he was handing it to me. 
The bus wasn't full, so he took a seat behind me. I said thanks, and he didn't answer anything back. Almost at the end of the ride, he moved to the seat next to us, and he kept staring at me. Now it was creepy. He wouldn't stop. I could see him from the corner of my eye, and I was getting a huge headache. At some point, I thought I must be making all of this up in my head from the horrible headache I had. When the bus stopped, I stood before the doors opened and I heard him say, Thank you, to my son, and bolted out of the bus as soon as the door opened. It's been hours and my head still hurts. I didn't confront him during the bus ride because I was creeped out, and I honestly felt like a deer in the headlights. I wasn't thinking straight. For purposes, I'm using a throwaway account and will use a fake name. This happened a few days ago while I was on my way home from visiting my friend's house. I was driving on a back road. It was late at night in my Tesla Model 3 while I was on auto drive. I'll admit that I was not paying attention to the road and I was on my phone while I had music in the car playing. The ride was okay and chill for a while but I'm not really sure because I was not paying attention to the time. Out of nowhere, my car immediately breaks and made an alarming sound. I was scared shitless and immediately took control of the wheel and looked through the windshield. When I looked through, I saw a figure standing inches from my car, barely avoiding being hit. My heart was racing from the impact and now seeing what I could only assume to be a person. They didn't even flinch from the sight of almost being hit. I looked at them for a good 10 seconds before I put my car in park and turned on the megaphone to ask them if they're okay. They didn't respond and proceeded to walk near my window. I locked my doors while they were approaching because I was terrified. They asked me if they could roll the window down to speak to them, but I refused and told them that I could hear them through the other side. I then asked why they were out there all alone in the cold, and they told me that their car had broken down and that they were hoping someone could stop to help them. As they were talking, I got a good look at their face, and they appeared to be around 25 to 30. He asked me my name, and I told him that my name was Rebecca. Then he told me his name was Ashton. After that small talk, I told him that I would be calling someone to assist him with his situation. He wasn't happy with that, and insisted that I drop him to a friend's house who lived nearby. That's when I become really freaked out and suspicious. He had told me he was waiting for someone, and now needed to be dropped off. I then put my car back in the drive and told him again, from the window since the megaphone is not available in park, that I would call someone to come help him. He tried to reach for the door handle, but I guess they forgot that Tesla handles are embedded into the car. When he did that, I immediately stepped on the pedal and went flying down the road. I didn't even look into my rear view mirror or put the car back into the autopilot. The whole ride back, I was scared shitless. I got back onto the main road where I was hoping to see cars and just floored it home. I couldn't get my mind off of it for the rest of the night. I have suspicions that that guy was not alone and that there was other people with him. I pray that they didn't get someone else who wasn't as lucky as me. I will never in my life stop to help some random person ever again. This happened a few years ago. I was a 16-year-old female and was going to German classes at a language school. They ended around 8.30 p.m., and the bus came at 9. I usually would wait there until about 5 minutes left to go out, as it was dark, and wait for the bus stop a street away. This time I decided to go earlier and see if the shops were open to buy something to eat. I arrived at the bus stop, 
there was a couple waiting. Past the gas station, sports club, full of screens to watch football and such. A few shops, a bakery, and finally, the supermarket. This was all on one street. Both bakery and supermarket were closed, so I went back and decided to buy something at the gas station. I bought snacks and went outside to the bus stop. There was someone else this time besides the couple, a guy, mid-thirties, maybe forties. I was minding my own business, waiting, eating my snack. There was still like 25 minutes left. The guy approached me and asked in German if I had a lighter. I told him that I didn't, and he backed down where he was. He came back later and asked something. I don't remember what, but I didn't want to talk to strangers, so I said in English, I don't speak German, which was kind of true. Unfortunately, he replied in English and told me he also spoke English. He asked where I was from, and I said Spain, not true, and then asked me what my name was, and I answered quickly with a fake name. He then told me that I was very pretty, and that he saw me past the sports club he was in, and I started to get very uncomfortable with the situation. He asked me my age, and I told him I was 17 again, not wanting to reveal anything true. He said that I looked older, He then said he actually came here to find someone that he could marry, and I was so pretty. Keep in mind, this dude was way older than me, and very obviously so. And I was even more uncomfortable and told him I had a boyfriend, also a lie, back in Spain. He was sad and said, oh, what a pity, and asked for my number. I told him I didn't have a phone number because I was not from here. He got sad and asked for my Facebook. I told him that I did not have one, and he got kind of pushy, almost angry at me. But you don't want to be friends? Don't you want to be my friend? And I was like, I'm sorry, I don't have anything. He kind of gave up at this point. He then left. He turned around and went back to the sports club, which means he saw me by the window and decided to follow me half a block and wait for the bus stop for me, which for me is one of the creepiest parts of this. So yeah, let's not meet again. My memory is fuzzy, but this story frightened me so much that I can't forget it, and it comes to mind now and then. I was five or six, living with my parents and older sister and brother. My sister is 16 years older than I am, and one day, my parents and brother wasn't home and my sister went to take a shower. She told me to stand in front of the bathroom door and play because she didn't want me to be completely alone. Either that or I told her I was scared to be alone, don't really know which one. The bathroom door was in the same hallway as our front door. The entrance was at a diagonal, and the opening of the door faced the bathroom. The door was locked. My sister had double-checked. We also had the little chain thing up. As I was standing there, the doorknob started to shake, which immediately frightened me. And to my surprise, the door opened as much as it could with the chain on it. Then a man tried to poke his head through the door. The memory of how he looked is what is unclear to me now. I can't be certain anymore, but I'm almost positive that he was bald, and he was white like a pink hue to his skin, almost as if he was sweltering hot and sweating or something. I don't remember seeing any sweat, though. His face had no expression, and he just pushed his face through the door as much as he could and looked at me. He didn't say a word. I was frozen and staring back at him. I was so scared that I couldn't move. I'm not sure how long this lasted. I feel like he could have put his hand through and flipped that chain to come inside if he wanted to. But he just kept staring. He stuck his hand through the door, but just gripped the edge of the door, and I remembered his knuckles turning pink from his tight grip. 
At some point, I turned to the bathroom door and screamed and pounded on the door for my sister to come out. She, of course, did so as fast as she could, and the man closed the door and left. My sister vaguely remembers this to this day as well, but she didn't see anyone when she looked out the window. I don't know what it was, but it was creepy as hell, and is one of a couple of creepy memories that I have from that house. The story takes place a good 15 years ago. So while I do, would like to go into as much detail as possible. I couldn't tell you the day, month, or year. All I remember is that it was after school, and it was still daylight, so it would have been in the late afternoon. Back in my hometown, a friend and I went on a walk along a public footpath which goes by some warehouses and through a forest which we knew pretty well, because we had been camping there once or twice when we were in Cubs. We hung out and played around at our old campsite, and continued on with our exploration of the area. I wanted to explore some part of the forest we had never been to before, so we naturally diverted from the footpath. About a mile from the footpath, we came to a barbed wire fence with a field on the other side. Knowing that we could not cross into the field, we decided to follow the fence to see where it ended. Honestly, we were probably near another town or village by that point, and we had no idea where we were. That was when we came to a small clearing. There was nothing unusual about it at first, as it looked like any other clearing, until we saw the bones. Scattered at the base of the tree, there was a skull of an animal with smaller bones surrounding it. This wasn't some small bird skull either, but about the size of a sheep skull. Now, this is kind of creepy, and not something you would ever want to stumble upon, but not unexplainable. It could have been the result of a predator, until I turn around. There, between a tree and the shape of a V, was a hooded figure looking in our direction. Not unlike the Ring Wrath from The Lord of the Rings, I didn't even stop for a heartbeat. I called to my friend, briefly pointing at the figure, and we legged it. We didn't stop running until we were back near the warehouse and near civilization. I still think about this creepy encounter to this day. It is something that will never be forgotten. My neighbor has been stalking me for a month. I'm a female, and I've noticed my neighbor doing some pretty creepy shit. The initial encounter was about a month ago, while I was walking my dog up a street that's about a quarter mile from my house. The man was talking to a group of people, let's say around three, and as I walked by, he ran up to pet my dog. He was asking me questions about my dog, such as name and gender. He then began to ask me questions about where I lived, but more so asking for confirmation as if he already somehow knew. Example, you live at XYZ, right? This made me uncomfortable, so I went to leave, and then he attempts to give me a hug and kiss me on the cheek. Previous to this, I had never met this person. After walking away, I thought the whole situation was weird but would proceed with caution in the future. Since then, there's been increase in encounters with this neighbor, such as walking up the street with my significant other. Then the neighbor seems to be waiting for us as we're walking by. Without saying anything, he just begins calling our dog and trying to pet him. He continues this even when we're walking away. This is two days after the initial encounter drove by our house 10 times within a short time period. This happened at night while my boyfriend and I were walking the dog. When he saw us, he slowed down, turned on his hazards, flashed the headlights, honked, and shouted out the window with the music blasting. 
the song he was blasting happened to be Window Shopper by 50 Cent. The circling began once we got to the house, two weeks ago. He was in his vehicle, waiting at the edge of the property. I noticed him when I walked outside with my dog, and he quickly drove off. This happened four to five days after the circling. Lurking at the stop sign in front of my home. As I was returning home from walking my dog, I noticed the neighbor standing near the stop sign looking towards my home. He ran off when I noticed that I had seen him. That was four days ago. He was waiting in his vehicle on the edge of the property where there was a clear view of the basement door. He had noticed by some guests that they had left through the door and he proceeded to drive off. Tonight. All the encounters happen to coincide with when we're walking our dog, four times a day. I've noticed that he tends to be outside more around the times I would normally walk the dog. In that situation, I go back inside and wait 45 minutes to walk or go to the dog park for our hour instead. Unfortunately, we weren't able to record these encounters, but we plan to start recording our walks from start to end, along with when we go outside just in case he's there. The frequency has made me feel targeted, as well as unsafe while walking my dog. I have taken a photo of the license plate, but I don't have much physical evidence. I'd like to call the police, but without evidence, I doubt they could do anything. Any recommendations would be greatly appreciated. <laughs>